All right, so we'll call the select board meeting for Wednesday, September 29th, 2021 to order. Um, in attendance is David Phil, Jane Nevin Smith, Joyce Chonglo, Amy Parsons, and John Wiskevitz. And all votes will be taken via roll call and uh, the meeting is being recorded. So first order of business is the consent agenda. We have warrants AP2212S, AP2212, AP2211, AP211S, PR2206. We have Hadley Dispatch resignation for Kyle Dragon and Barrett uh, Bergdahl. Hopefully that's close. Um, Hadley Dispatch appointment full time for Megan Healy. Uh, cemetery committee resignation for Diane Stengel. One day liquor license change request. Friends of the Council on Aging are requesting a change of date to October 1st, 2021. Community Preservation Act Committee at large resignation for Edwin Matusko. Approval of levy assessment phase two contract, Woodard and Kern. And declaration of surplus property, DPW, all tech planer for a 68 inch angle broom. I move so moved. Approve. All right. I think that was Joyce that made the motion. I get a second. I second. All right. Second from Jane. Any discussion on these? Did Mike have anything to say about dispatchers or the new one at all? Or just um, it's okay. Well, and as far as the, the resignations, um, both of those dispatchers are, are wonderful people and we're sorry to see them go. Um, B is uh, actually about to attend a police academy and go work for Chicopee. And um, Kyle just doesn't have the time for us anymore. Uh, he's got too much going on. Uh, as far as Megan Healy, she is actually on the, uh, I thought she was, yes, there she is. She's on the meeting. Um, Megan has been working uh, in a part-time capacity for us uh, for a little while now. Um, and you probably remember her. I read a bio on her. Um, not too long ago, she uh, has proven to be an incredible asset to our agency. And um, rather than reading the entire bio again, um, such a short period of time, uh, I would simply recommend her to be um, promoted essentially from a part-time position to a replacement full-time position for, for B when she leaves. Um, as I mentioned, uh, she's been doing a phenomenal job. She's a great asset to the team, and uh, we would like to uh, bring her aboard full time. It will be a replacement position as one is leaving, and she will um, be a seamless fit and move right into the spot. The sooner we can make the transition, the less we have to worry about any open shifts, staffing shortages, and overtime. Um, that sounds great. I just I just wanted to have a little something for people that don't know. Um, of what our changes are in the department. I did have, while well, I have you here, I did have a, um, one of my docs was up riding Chamura Road. And um, he, when he arrived there, there was someone on the ground that had struck their head. And so he called 911 and he just said, dispatch, everybody was just fabulous when they got there, EMS, everybody. So um, kudos to our whole team throughout. So thank you. Thank you, Joyce. We always love hearing that. It was probably Megan who handled the call. So that, that should tell you everything you need to know. There we go. Perfect. <laughs> All right. Well, Megan, thanks for uh, jumping on the call. And uh, in a second, I guess, congrats on the full time. But uh, if we could get a roll call vote. Roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Trungalo? Yes. Skevitz? Parsons? Yes. No, thank you, John yes. Parsons. Thank it, it, you. Except for the broom, DPW. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, Megan. Thank you so much. So I'll talk to you, uh, talk to you in the next couple of days, Megan. Thanks. All right, so we'll jump down to public comments. Um, 3.1 on the agenda, we'll limit this to 15 minutes. Please limit your comments to three minutes each so that others may have an opportunity to speak. 
And is anybody here? I think uh, Rich Wilga is here for public comments, I believe. Yes. All right. So take it away, Rich. You can take your mask off. My name is Richard Wilga, 28, 28 Kimura Road. Until retirement, I worked for a construction company in North Hadley for 42 years called Carl's Excavating. I am therefore quite familiar with the tremendous advantage of households or businesses tied into our municipal wastewater system. Users of this system can literally introduce anything that flows, including chopped vegetable matter, used cooking, grease and oil, used phenomen, phenomen, yeah, hygiene products, and disposable wipes. All aforementioned products are taboo to any septic system. Any new or repaired work done to a septic system is subject to a cost of several thousand dollars, depending on the size of the building. Failure of an existing system can be prevented by using a cost-based maintenance plan, unlike sewer users, where there is literally no maintenance necessary. It is not only unfair for septic users to subsidize sewer system users, it is morally wrong. It is the equivalent of robbing Peter to pay Paul. I have also contacted a lawyer in regard to this issue. His advice was to try to convince the select board that this way of balancing the sewer division budget is unfair. Should the select board choose not to rescind the vote to apply a line item on all water bills titled infrastructure, which subsidizes the sewer division, there are two alternatives. I am not an advocate of government by petition, but it may be necessary. According to our tax collector's record, there are nearly 300 more septic users than those on sewer. Signatures should not be a problem. That failing, a lawsuit is an alternative by which the lawyers always win either way. I have in my position a document provided by our tax collector's office that states the line item labeled infrastructure is indeed credited to the sewer division account. I think that sums up what I can, I'm all set. Okay, and thank you for your comments. Uh, very we, are, we are going to talk about this at a future meeting. Uh, we've got a water rate. Uh, I understand. Water and sewer rate. Um, and and uh, Joyce wanted to bring this up and talk about this as well. So um, we, we can't obviously debate it tonight because it's public comments and it's not on the, the agenda, but it will be something that is uh, discussed in the future. I understand the process. I've been there. Thank you for your time. All right. Thank you. Uh, anybody else for public comments? Bill? Yes, I just wanted to uh, mention that the no parking signs on West Street seem to be doing their job um, in controlling the Esalon overflow. Um, and I driven by a few times. The only car that I saw parked in violation of the signs had a nice orange ticket on it. So um, seems to be working well. Good to hear. Hallelujah. <laughs> How many years did it take? <laughs> a few. A few. <laughs> uh, right. Interestingly enough, I happened to be with uh, the sergeant when he wrote the ticket. Uh, we were, they had to do some work on my cruiser and we were coming back into town and the car was literally parked almost perfectly uh, equidistant between the two no parking signs. It was almost comical. Can't read. <laughs> was that the Mercedes? Oh, it wasn't a Mercedes. Was that all you had, Bill, or Jim? No, that was it. Okay. All right. Anybody else for public comments? Last call. Okay. Oh, what? I saw Nicole. Bloom, Blum? Yes, I'm not sure if this is when I, um, if I need to say something now, I just know that Andrea had been emailing with Jennifer about um, talking to the select board this evening uh, about the potential doing the Hadley uh, 
town fr- the common Fridays again, you know, the, the beer and cider garden on the town common. Um, but I don't, I don't know if it's on the agenda. Um, I just yeah. haven't. Been... Under, uh, we're going to take that up under, uh, okay. not right. anticipated in just a minute. Okay. Great. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. okay. No problem. Uh, anything else for public comments? Okay. Um, well, let's see. Why don't we jump down to business not anticipated so they don't have to wait around. Take that up now. Uh, Jennifer or Nicole, do you want to introduce uh, what we're doing? I'm happy sure, to I'm... let Nicole. Hi. Um, all right. So um, you might remember a couple of years ago before COVID, uh, Andrea Stanley um, and our business Car Cider House did the um, beer and cider garden on the town common for I think it was four Friday evenings. And um, we're proposing maybe to try to do it uh, at kind of a m- more low key version, I guess, uh, without the pergola and the tables, but sort of just a another way to get people together um, in a socially distanced way uh, for three Fridays in October. Um, and we're, we're not sure if this is too last minute or not, but we wanted to propose it, see if anyone had any questions, if it was something that we might be able to make happen. Would it be in the same area that you um, had it before? And second question is, is have you um, passed this by fire and police just to get there? Okay. I'm sure, you know, most of the select board had no problem with it before, but we do have to have, uh, and DPW also. So all three need to chime in on that, um, which I'm sure if there was no problems before, there might not be, but we need to involve everybody. Oh, yeah, of course. You know, I think because we just proposed it this week, it, um, uh, maybe it would be something that we would do either right now if there were questions. And of course, uh, if the select board was okay, then we could go and talk to all those um, people as well in the next couple of days and see if we can fast track it. Yeah, Columbus Day, Columbus Day weekend would be great. It's, it's a nice weekend with foliage. And is that one of the ones that you were thinking of? I- I don't think so. I think that's the one we're not, that's the first weekend, right? It would be the last three weekends of October, just in terms of like getting the word out there and uh, making sure we had it planned well and everybody was, yeah. Okay. No, the the same spot. I think the second weekend, I think Columbus Day is the second Friday. Okay. So it'd be like the second, yeah. Yeah. You have to obtain like liquor licenses for that and all that paperwork. Yeah. So, um, Jennifer's gonna. I was just gonna say that is what they're requesting. They're requesting the one day liquor license for the three days and the use of the town commons for the the three nights as well. And I Mm -hmm. would ask if the select board does decide to vote on this tonight that they make the all of the permits and licenses with conditions following approval from police, fire, and building and DPW. So I would ask y'all to to put those in there to allow all of them time. Since we did receive last night it just wasn't possible for me to get everything today yeah is so um any, yeah go ahead i, is there I was going to ask have for, food is it are we going to have food yes in the well, past um, we had food vendors yeah i think that like i said we'll try to just do something much more uh kind of dialed back so maybe one food vendor possibly me tiara just doing the tacos again or a food truck if that's something that's easier for the, you know, D- Department of Health to um, approve. Um, we're open, you know, to kind of different variations on what we did last time, um, but fewer for sure. Just much more scaled back, just because it's kind of late. Yeah, and would it be? I'm all in favor of it. Would it be something like a late afternoon because it gets dark now sooner, so that you know parking. What, you, you, yeah, we put down um, we put down five to nine, but I was thinking about that today. It feels like nine would be way too late on a in an October evening, but maybe either four to eight or five to eight, just kind of a few hours for people to gather. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm thinking about them trout, you know, walking to their cars and things with it getting dark now too. So. Mm-hmm. Um, People love cutting down that West Street. Of course, I wanted to close West Street down, but that got nixed. But anyway, we'll go <laughs> on from there. Um, 
So parking and things like that with people walking to their vehicles and stuff, you know, I would have safety concerns. But I, other than that, I don't have a problem with, with the vending. I think it's a great idea. It's a nice, nice venue. Yeah, it was really fun last time. So fun. Yeah, yeah, super. I went, I went several of the Fridays and it was well attended and people park neatly off the street and on the common. And so they're not really crossing the street to get to their cars. Yeah, mm-hmm. it did some work. Yeah, we had that parking area and along the along the road. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Favor. Yeah. I'll, I'll make, like I'll make a motion. You know. Go ahead. Are we we have to like amend it at all or no? Uh, Amy, I there was a couple people talking. I'm sure that I think you were, were you trying to make a motion? Or? Oh yeah. So I was I was moving that we approve it pending. <laughs> appropriate licenses and pending DPW um, police and fire. Great. And building. And building. building. <laughs> I agree. Um, Board, yeah. of health. Board of Health. Board of Health. Board of Health will do their own licenses. We don't typically, the Board of Health will, they'll go to Board of Health for that. Actually, me, Tierra probably will. Right. I'll second that motion by Amy. Okay, motion by Amy, second by Joyce. Any other discussion on this? No. And just so we don't get in trouble, the reason we're taking it under unanticipated is because they want to start um, fairly soon and we don't have another meeting scheduled between now and the start date for this uh, event. So that's why we're taking it up tonight. Uh, Jennifer, roll call. Uh, Roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Chungaloo? Yes. Wiskevitz? Yes. And Parsons? Yes. Thank you. And Nicole, I'll be in touch with you and Andrea. Great. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a good night. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. You too. All right. Um, is anybody here for the electric, electric ag, electrical aggregation program? I don't think John O'Rourke is going to be able to make it. He emailed me back saying that he still thought it was on the 6th. So I emailed him again and I have not heard back from him. So we might have to reschedule that till the 13th. Okay. Um, then I will jump back up to 5.1 DPW project review. I'm just going to give a quick summary. We get a lot of questions about what's happening with paving and culverts and all that kind of stuff. So uh, Chris Okafor, um, Scott McCarthy, myself and Carolyn met uh, last week to talk about a a variety of things. And uh, just wanna hit the main points here. And then Chris, you can jump in if you need at at any time, if if I've got anything wrong. Um, So Spruce Hill Road was just, uh, resurfaced. So that is uh, finally underway as far as paving. Um, we've got a few more roads to do and it looks like nightly was one of them, but that may have to wait till the spring because the culvert that is collapsing over there, we're waiting on a response from a couple of contractors in order to make a decision of who to hire and meet um, uh, procurement rules with the three quotes that we have to get. Um, We do have drainage issues on Huntington Road and Breckenridge Road. Um, We were going to try to tackle the Breckenridge, I'm sorry, the Huntington project this fall. Uh, It's about a $40,000 project, um, but that was contingent on being able to get some pipes. And and Chris, were, were you guys able to find some pipes for that drainage project or no? Mr. Chairman, we uh, we anticipate getting some pipes before the in about two weeks. Okay, so that'll take care of some of the drainage issues down there. Um, hopefully, before winter, and we have an issue with ice and uh, hazardous road conditions in the area. Uh, Breckenridge, there's drainage issue there as well, but that's likely to um, and be expensive and a little bit more, require a little bit more engineering and whatnot. So that will probably wait until the spring to be taken care of. Uh, line painting has started around town. 
Um, it was not finished because the contractor was basically squeezing us into the schedule and had to work around other towns and other commitments. And then my understanding is they showed up one day and ran out of paint before they could finish painting for the day. So um, they will be back, I, I think, next week, Chris, as far as uh, finishing up. It's the latest. Yes, next, okay. next week. All right. And that'll that'll take care of the rest of it, correct? Yes. Okay. Yeah, Will that include uh, striping on the speed bumps on North Lane? The the speed bump on North Lane, uh, the chairman has authorized us to go ahead. We have a contractor coming to do that. It's not the same contractor. Yes. Um, as far as well, talking about the speed bumps real quick, I'll hit I'll hit on that. So after going around in circles with uh, the paving contractor for many months and, and fighting back and forth, uh, the, I guess the verdict is going to be to leave them as they are um, and mark them correctly, paint them correctly. They do seem to be functioning to some degree. Um, they weren't as high as we would have liked, uh, but rather than stretch this out and possibly get into legal fees and, and burn bridges that we may need in the future. Um, I, I think we're just gonna leave them um, and, and go ahead and, and move forward. Um, I don't know, has anybody been down there? It seems like people are slowing down a little bit still. Yeah, they're great for testing your shocks on your car. They don't slow anybody down. But... I think they will slow people down if they see them. I think they're not very visible without the stripes on them. Yeah, I agree, Jane. Um, so hitting the other stuff, uh, st street sweeping has been going on. Uh, hey, David, David, can I interject there? That my yeah. mute was off. That they're cutting down Railroad Street, and they are cutting down Goffey Street across from my garage. And it's like going down there. It's like Speedway um, because I go and pick up my husband or whatever down there. And I'm going. There's a lot of cars that actually come off of Route Nine and come down. Um, cut across from going to Amherst, they cut over, and then they're also coming down Railroad Street. So that's become a really busy street right now. Um, and them avoiding actually going down North Street. So something for us to watch uh, for, as I had mentioned before, when we talked about um, the closure or whatever of certain streets, you know, one ways or whatever. So I'd like us to monitor that a little bit more. Yeah, the police have been sitting there on Railroad Street and uh, you know, stopping the people that are not stopping for the stop signs. Mm -hmm. That's that's a yeah. little incentive there. If the stop signs are there and they're working and they're stopping, that'll keep them slowed down over there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll we'll jump on that again, Joyce. We were uh, we were doing it for a while after they went in there and seemed like we were making some headway. We'll I'll put it out there again to the officers. Thank you. The other thing that I have seen, because I often go um, Cemetery Road to Cross Path to Northampton, is the number of cars turning illegally left, headed towards Amherst and turning left onto Cross Path. So I think if we could put some kind of police there occasionally, it would be useful, especially in the early morning commuting hours. Yeah, we can add that to the list. That's one Thank of you. One of the many reasons that we were asking for traffic officers uh, the last budget cycle and COVID, COVID yeah. stole that from us. Yeah, like like you haven't had enough to do, I know for sure. <laughs> no, no, not at all. <laughs> all right, uh, last couple of things. The you could add a million things, people taking illegal left. Sorry, I must be like really delayed. Am I wicked delayed? You are. You're just, Go ahead. <laughs> you're, just you're just slow, Amy. That's all. No problem. <sighs> Dang it. <laughs> now you all know. No, I mean, I was just saying like you could literally add a million things to the police department and it would just still never be enough. I mean, people taking no. illegal lefts into the mall from Route 9, you know, great. We put a speed bump on Northland. Let's put one on Railroad Street, let's put one on Joffrey. Okay, great. Now we're going to need one on Newton Lane. It's like, right. what are yeah. you going to do? Yeah. I mean, it's just something that you monitor. It's a hit or miss thing. And it's just well to bring it up every now and then that these different areas need to be monitored. They can't be monitored all the time. 
Um, but these are the places that, you know, we tried to rectify something by putting the speed bumps on North Street. But in actuality, all it does is detour people from not going down there and using other side streets. So, you know, it's a hit or miss thing, really. I mean, it's the way it goes. Can't do much about it. Yeah. Um, Moody Bridge, the uh, we got a, a federal grant for that for paving. The paving's done. We're just trying to uh, figure out the paperwork and close up things there. Um, as far as the Moody Bridge culvert goes, um, not much progress there the way uh, it's kind of late in the year here. Um, so that may be something that happens in the spring, but we did get a grant at least to cover. Uh, Chris, was it just the engineering or was it more than the engineering? I just the uh, design, the engineering. Okay, all right. But that's, that's a, still on the to-do list amongst the many other things. Um, and then the guys have been going around trying to do pothole repair. I asked them to do a, a, a good check of the entire town and do some last minute pothole repairs before the snow starts falling and it gets all torn up again by the snow plows. So, David, can you, can you tell me why they just paved Spruce Hill Road and didn't do any milling or anything like that? They just paved over the road that was there? Uh, Chris. Yes, uh, the, the, um, we, we could not, we could not mill uh, Spruce, uh, Spruce Hill because, uh, let me be, begin with the amount we have. In terms of, we use chapter 90 money. We have uh, other roads that are worse than Spruce Hill. So what we did on Spruce Hill was to do the, uh, shim the road and then put the valet. We uh, understand that if we have to reclaim the road, it will be very expensive. And mm -hmm. it's relatively compared to Mill Valley Road between Emerson Line and South Maple. Mm -hmm. So, or in the case of where we 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 took care of, um, I know we milled some part of West Street uh, because of the location. So we also milled the um, Moody Bridge Road. As the chairman said, we will be getting our money back from Federal Highway Administration. Mm -hmm. so, so that is why we didn't do Spruce Hill. All we did was just charm the area and shimming, shimming and also overlay. Okay, just an overlay went on, okay. That's why I asked a couple times if the board could go and take a ride like you used to and take a look at these roads. Those are secondary roads that only have about eight layers of stamp, uh, stone and oil on them. They probably would have got away with another layer of stone and oil without paving. The paving would be saved for the more highly traveled roads and the, the uh, more roads that get a lot more use than Moody Bridge, uh, the slow side of West Street. Uh, th th this, is, this is stuff that we've been going through for years and years now, for 10 years now on this board. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, that of Moody Bridge, that was done because uh, the town and the Federal Highway had an agreement. And we tend to, if, if it wasn't that we'll be asking for um, reimbursement from the Federal Highway, I don't think the board will allow us to spend that kind of money on Moody Bridge Road. So it was, so Moody Bridge Road is, is um, in a class by itself compared to West Street or, as I said, um, Mill Valley Road between M Horse Line and uh, South Maple is very bad. We also, Hockenham is very bad from South Hadley to those Lawrence Drive. So there are a couple, couple of areas. In terms of the stone, it's, it's a good treatment, but it's usually a treatment that, as you said, is good for side, side roads, it's good for less busy roads. But if you look at it right now, most of our main arteries, main roads, uh, in the past, that was used. For example, Bay Road right now uh, is failing because this is a highly traveled road because of the stone. If you look at River Drive, the same thing. So I've been looking at it and I plan to sit down with the chair to discuss some options based on the money we have. Uh, even if we have to put those main roads on them, um, three to five year plan where we have to, we have to reclaim them. We have to use uh, overlay because of the traffic. Okay. 
And I think that's about it for the updates I had. Uh, anybody have any questions for Chris Weiser? No? John has no questions. Amazing. Yeah, I got a lot of questions for you. <laughs> we'll All right. That up tomorrow after the uh, grand openings. Okay. All right, Chris, any, you have anything else for us? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I just want to let the board know that the MS4, we've also submitted the uh, third year report to EPA and um, DEP. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Have a good night. All right, you too. Uh, dementia program. Jane, do you want to update us on that? We're all getting there. <laughs> <laughs> more and more. So the Hadley Select Board voted to approve applying for a grant that would let Hadley be recognized as an age and dementia friendly town. The committee has been meeting for several months with the representative from Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, working on a survey to get input from the town. That survey is now ready and available on the COA website for filling out online. And it's also available on paper at the Senior Center, at the Collector's Office in Town Hall, at the library, and it will be at the ribbon cutting ceremony tomorrow. Surveys will also be available at the special fall town meeting. We are particularly seeking responses from Hadley residents 60 and older, but would welcome input from younger people, especially if they are involved with seniors. The Senior Center is happy to help people who want to come in and fill out a survey online or on paper but we can provide computers for those who would like to use that method. There will be two specific survey filling out parties with refreshments at the Senior Center on October 15th or October 25th, both at 2 p.m. Surveys returned by October 31st will be eligible for two drawings of a $25 gift card. We will continue to collect surveys for the rest of the year but are hopeful that many will meet this early deadline so we can get a good start on our counts. And we really hope that everyone will participate. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so Jennifer, skip the electrical aggregation. I'm, I've just checked my email again. I have nothing from him. Um, let me do it one more. All right. Well, if he, if he pops up before the end of the meeting, he can talk. But Otherwise, we'll put okay. it in. Um, okay. Let's jump down to 6.2 special town meeting warrant. Uh, we had posted for a joint meeting between the finance uh, committee and the select board, but the finance committee wanted to meet uh, separately to hash out some things. So they are going to do that. Uh, when was that, Carolyn? Well, I have to take some ownership. It was supposed to be tonight at five o'clock, but I, ma I made a mistake and I just posted for the combined meeting and not for the five o'clock. So I have to own that. Um, so they are meeting on Friday uh, in the afternoon okay. to make their recommendations. All right, but we're, we're gonna go through the warrant tonight? Yes. Okay. So David, if I can ask first, if um, can, we, can we talk about the date? Yes, please. Okay, so Unified Command met, which consisted of Dr. Mosler, our moderator, Randy, David, myself, and Mike Spanknable. And we, uh, based on the recommendations from Dr. Mosler and Randy, um, the recommendation was to have it outdoors. So that, um, which, which left obviously Saturdays, we can't do it on a weeknight. So I would like to recommend having it on October 16th, which is a Saturday at 11 a.m. So first I wanted to make that recommendation. And did you want to, do you have any questions about that date before I move forward? We decided on the public safety complex, right? So it'll be- Yes, public safety, I'm sorry, yes. And that we will take care of the sound issue. That was the major complaint last time. I think it's early enough, we're a month ahead. So I think it will, uh, uh, I think actually we can fit more inside than we did last time. Okay, so we need a motion to uh, hold town meeting. Uh, just one more question. Mm -hmm. um, why 11 o'clock instead of 10 o'clock? Because that's definitely going to run over people's lunch times. 
Um, if you, there's a good assumption that based on the content of the warrant, it's not gonna be as long um, as, as other meetings. Um, and as well as they felt it would be a little bit warmer just in case you have a really cold morning. I agree with that. Perhaps not. <laughs> So <laughs> well, we, we did it too late last year. Um, yeah. I'm not in favor. I don't agree that we can't hold it inside. So I don't, I don't agree with that, but I will go with whatever our command is. And that would be the board of health. I do uh, appreciate what they have to offer. So I'm not going to, you know, buck them, but I, I feel like we could have held it inside as other people do um, safely. So you know, having it again at the safety complex, we did run into problems last year. Um, certainly if it rains or whatever, we're gonna be up, you know, what creek. I'm not gonna say the word, I'll be nice tonight. Um, so, you know, we do have some of those things to take into consideration and we can't just put up pop-ups all over the outside of the garage. So, you know, I, is there a date other than that if we have to postpone it? Uh, that would be up to the moderator to decide to postpone. He can do it that day. This, the sound, I, if I remember correctly, the biggest issue last, uh, last fall was uh, it was cold, which we can't control, uh, but the sound. And I've spoken with both uh, Michael and um, Drew, and we're confident that that sound issue will be addressed. And, okay. and she spanked me able believes that he can put more seats safely inside underneath where there's some in, so it's in the it's in the garage or the bay so it's you're still having all of the fresh air but there will be some covering but hopefully it's a nice sunny day and you'll want to be out in the sun mm -hmm. okay we'll do what we have i to also do. think 11 o'clock is is probably better too for farmers that have morning chores and things so would you like a motion? Yes. What time what, I make a motion for an 11 o'clock outdoor meeting on Saturday, October 16th at the what, safety complex. What time did we do it last year? I thought it was later. I thought it was like one o'clock. I thought it was one o'clock. Yeah. Okay. 11's good. 10 would have been better, but 11's good for farmers. That's good for me. And warmer. I'm going for warmer. Is second. that a second choice? I'll, I'll, I'll second that, yes. <laughs> right. Motion by Jane, second by Joyce. Any other discussion on town meeting date, time, and location? Get your winter coat out. Yep. All right, Jennifer. Roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Was Chung Chunglo? <laughs> yes. Was Kevin? Chunglo. Yeah. <laughs> And Parsons. Yes. Thank you. Okay. So Dave, if we can just go through each article. Um, I don't know if you just want to read them and um, or how you want to go through that. We have gone through a lot of it. I'm going to ask Linda to join us and she'll put the actual warrant up um, and why she's doing that. I do. I just want to, I really like to have opportunities like this to just tell you uh, Linda has been a huge support once again. Um, Linda, I don't know what draft we're on, but we have spared you from seeing them all. <laughs> um, I think we probably had four drafts today. So um, I just wanna just let you know that she has contributed so much to this whole preparation and it really has consumed uh, the majority of, of her time. Uh, and I just really appreciate it. Um, and we're hoping that this is the second to the last draft. Legal is still reviewing a few of the articles that we have sent back today, um, but this is as close as it's gonna get before some numbers are finalized. Uh, the content really hasn't changed. We've added the CPA articles, uh, but in red is what we're still going to, if we have to anticipate any minor changes, but I don't, I, I really looking at this after, um, waiting for finance to make their recommendations. They've had some input on some of these items, especially in the omnibus budget. Uh, so I just wanted to point that out. What you see in red is what we're gonna, well, we still have to do some final work on. But Are the content is as is. Recommendations tonight or no? Yeah, because yes. I'm gonna need you to vote on each article. 
Okay. If yes. you vote tonight, if you make your recommendations, it will be part of the post warrant, which yes. is why the Finance Committee wants to meet on Friday at two so that they can get their recommendations and also before it's posted. Okay. And so when is it what so when is it going to be posted? Weren't we supposed to close the warrant tonight? No, we closed that at the last meeting. The clo we closed that so not, no more articles would be coming in that we could finalize what we were working on. Okay, but any changes can take place up until tell me. Yeah, or... and it's going to be more wording than anything. Okay, so do we have a meeting next week is my question. You have a public forum on the 13th. Nothing next week? Nothing next week. Okie dokie. Are you asking for an extra meeting, Joyce? Whatever it is to get it done, I'm all about it. I'm done camping. You got me. All right. If, if I, what I can say is, Joyce, and I, if you, if we, anything comes up that we feel is a substantial increase, you know, mm -hmm. absolutely, we would bring a meeting together for have to have you review that. But this is this is it. This is okay. it. We're just they're literally. I'm I'm talking about pennies or or you know a, a, okay. any kind of change. Would you agree, Linda? I think we're really done. Um, as, as long as Finance Committee and Select Board vote on what's before them tonight, this is what's going to get posted. And the only thing that would change, it, I can't see anything going up. I can see maybe uh, finding out that something costs less and maybe moving it down. But I, I think, uh, I sure hope we're done. So right. it's posted on Friday. <laughs> So thank you, if, thank you, uh, thank you, <laughs> thank you. Before you even get started, Linda, thank you so much. Is sure. the forum on Zoom or is it in person somewhere? It will be at we're, we're Zoom. I'm assuming it's Zoom. You guys have not changed any any platform yet to go to in person meetings. Correct. Let's go. Head it out. Linda, do you want to start with the? since it's numbers items for us to start with. Sure, um, this is the budget that, uh, that went through uh, the changes for, uh, went through the finance committee last night. Um, we had much higher numbers last time we showed this to you. Capital. All, all, all was nice to, um, all was nice to reduce rather than increase our figures here. So the overall increase the budget you can see now is 187,440. Um, the main things that the finance committee did and what they did vote on are to bring the capital amounts. I think uh, um, I suggested 100,000 into the debt principal and they reduced that to 50,000. They thought that would be enough. And that was, that was good information to have going into the capital planning committee last night and gave us a little more flexibility there. And um, the other is I had put back in the full amount for OPEB, which was like 277,000 or so. And they suggested uh, moving, they supported moving that down by, to an increase of only 50,000. And um, you'll see later on, the reason they wanted to keep OPEB down was because any excess in free cash, they felt at this point that putting money into stabilization, which was much more important than getting back and funding some of these other items because they feel they've made that promise to uh, town meeting for the last couple of budget seasons. And, um, and uh, in spite of that, our stabilization, which was $2 million two years ago, is down to 1.3 million. So we're comfortable we're gonna make a good dent in that um, tonight. And we'll get to that again later. So those are the three items that they, uh, oh, the other one that uh, finance committee brought up was adding in uh, $15,000. You see there are 132, um, reserve fund here. Um, they felt like that was a, another good thing to do with some extra money rather than send it on Pope OPEB or the principal was to keep it in there uh, to add to their reserve fund. So they now have a hundred thousand in case there were any um, issues that come up during the year for emergencies. Linda, before we get in this, we're, we're, I, I'm seeing a lot of increases here. So could you tell me what we have for free cash? Do we have that number before we get into all this increasing? Uh, oh, the increase here is 187. It's not the, that's the new budget, but yes, I can, because that's a brand new, brand new, fresh, uh, hot off the press number that came in this afternoon. I don't think you even gotten to forward it around, although I have, um, I think there was at least one phone call made. Um, yeah, our free cash came in at one point, something over 1.3 million. Oh yep. my goodness. Yep, it is. One, 1, 358,505. 
And your next question is how to get that. And so I'll tell you that too. Um, okay. When we were providing those monthly reports all the way, all through the year and, um, and really watching our budget and keeping that down and really pushing to get the revenues up. And you remember we had estimated revenues down um, yep. during the year. And so, um, so the amount of money that we put into free cash and balancing the budget last year was pretty substantial. So by the time you got to your year end, and I'm talking about you know, these reports that you've got these. Yep. Okay. By the time we got to the very end of the year, what happened in the general fund is the revenues actually came in 200,000 higher than we had, um, than we had estimated. Mm -hmm. which was great. And then, uh, but more of a surprise was, uh, was the, how tightly people managed their budgets mm -hmm. because that word just kept going out month after month. And we actually had close to 900,000 in rollovers, rollbacks, I'm sorry, rollbacks from departments at the end of the year. I haven't mm -hmm. really analyzed that where they came from. Um, I, Carolyn was very clear with the message during the year, no penalty. So we don't want to say, uh, we don't want to go too far in finding out which which uh, department rolled uh, back a lot of money to the town because the understanding was there will be no no punishment. It is not it's not use or lose it. We really wanted to get the money back so that we can roll into this next year. Mm -hmm. So be between those two, that's one point one million dollars that we had. We knew we were going to be getting back. And then uh, free cash is just one of those funny things. There's another couple hundred thousand in adjustments here and there, some up, some down. So we netted out about 1.3. Uh, so, so. Wow, we, perfect. We do have uh, the money to put into the budget. Um, um, and, and we could make a choice for putting into OPEB or more into the capital or various other things. But I think that the decisions, I really like the way finance committee went through it. And I think you'll probably, um, you, you'll probably agree. Let's wait. Um, I, as I said to them with OPEB, um, we sort of had a no penalty year for getting off track with your OPEB planning uh, for, you know, you've got your plan and you want to stick with each, each year. And I feel if there's any time we're going to come up short again this year, where we're not quite out of the um, quite out of the woods, mm -hmm. it's probably another good one to not fund it fully. And even when it, and then plan on getting back on track next year for FY23. And I think that we're just going to look fine in the credit rating world for for doing that, taking a break, mm -hmm. being careful about how we manage our money, and then getting back on track. And I'm, I would even suggest that if we're not comfortable with getting fully back on track with where we left off, that mm -hmm. we might uh, consider ratcheting back down and then increasing from there again. Mm -hmm. Because we were on path for, uh, we, we selected a number and each year we were increasing it by two and a half percent. We might right. wanna ratchet it back down and increase it again, which would be a better way to manage OPEB than to fully fund it one year and then the next year go, I don't think we can do it this year. And then going right. up with that. We, have, we really ought to get on a plan that we know that we can manage. So yeah. we have plenty of time to work that out for 23. So I think this was yeah. a good choice from finance yeah. committee to keep it down and to get the money back into stabilization because mm -hmm. that was our rainy day fund. Mm -hmm. um, we used it, we had the rain, it poured, we used yeah. it. Um, we had 2 million in it. Um, and I, I don't know if I said this already, but now we're down to 1.3 and we can, um, if we get that money back in there, we're there. We've got it for next round. Mm -hmm. If we leave it at one point three, and we need it once or twice more, we're out of stabilization. We're, we're gone. It's gone. So, yeah. and more so, importantly, we follow through on our promises that were made at town meeting. So that's yes. Yeah, that's that's important too. Yep. And I've I've been around so freaking long that I have seen stabilization go down to zero. And we had to really build it back up over the years. And I'm talking, well, you know how old I am. But anyway, that's, that's how long ago that people at town meeting just spent it down and didn't save anything for a rainy day. And we just decided yeah. back when that we would put something there that, you know, when we needed it, we needed it. And, you know, it cer certainly has served, served us better for sure. So, yeah, mm -hmm. this is great. Thank you. Right. 
Right. And we know that another reason this uh, this this cash is up is that the, the school um, mm -hmm. had offered mm -hmm. the 375,000. So we, as a minimum, wanted to get that back into stabilization. And uh, we did get that money from the school and it is part of that free cash. Yeah. And again, following through and saying thank you and getting that back in and, and, yeah. and we'll be, we'll be well set just, up. Yeah, we, you know, you, I'm gonna just go on just for a minute. It just talks about total teamwork and I talk about it at work and I can talk about it here that you have teamwork among all the departments and everybody doing what they feel we need for the town. And it just proves it right here that we are looking out for everybody's welfare. So it, it works. Good. So other than those changes that finance committee made, those were the big ones. And the rest was just a, a bit of tweaking as we uh, made our calculations. So I, I don't know, I, I, are there more questions on the budget increases? No. I'll, do we need to make a motion on that one? Yes. I'll make a motion to accept the um, budget uh, as is. I'll second. You just had one question. What is the balance on that old bed now? Uh, um, uh, oh, Carolyn, we were just looking at that. Um, was it like 2.2 .2 million? You know what? By the time you finish uh, your roll call, I'll have it. You will. Motion by Joyce, second by Jane, and any other discussion on budget mm -hmm. article? Uh, Jennifer, roll call. Roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Chungalo? Yes. Skevitz? Yes. You ready, Linda? Parsons? It's coming up. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank you. Enter my password. Are y'all voting on who's speaking to what tonight, too? Carolyn? No, we'll do that when we. Uh, my we can um am i unmuted yeah we can or you can wait till we assign get them i get the motions on the warrant so it's up to you we can do it now or wait until i present it with the motions uh, i missed the question let's let's just get through all of this we'll okay. go back and then just divide it up okay, okay. the answer on opeb is i thought 2.2 .2, but it's actually almost 2.3 it's 2 million two hundred ninety eight thousand five hundred which puts us, I think, about a third of the way towards our funding goal. And are, and are we covering what we're using a year or not? Uh, what we're using each year, we're paying out of the, uh, the operating budget. We're not drawing down on the funds that we're putting away. Um, eventually we will be. There'll be a point where we turn around and start paying it out of here. That's the point of it, because that's why the, this is what we're doing with the trust is funding what they call, call an unfunded liability, because as we sit here, knowing that in the future, we pay these to the retirees, but we don't have it set aside. We have to set it aside into the trust fund. We are paying retirees now, but we're paying them out of the, out of the, um, out of our operating funds. It's Isn't in the budget. it amazing that we have put that away and there's some towns and cities that haven't done a thing. It, it, you know, what really is amazing and what, um, what I've said is really amazing is the money that we didn't put in there this year, yeah. we, we were supposed scheduled to put in, we more than made up on the investments on the money that we put in in previous years. Oh, That's perfect. why it's so good we put it away early because that money yep. is working for us even when we couldn't make any more contributions. Yeah. That's what puts us way ahead of the game. And yeah. I, I was just thrilled to see that. Yeah, me too, Linda. Yeah. Oh, it's work. That's it's working for us. We've we've done the right thing, so we will get back yep. on track. But I think yep. a pause right now is is appropriate. That's good. The good. second part, the second part of the budget is the second budget is the enterprise funds. There are no changes in the budget at all. Um, the change is that the estimates, uh, the revenues that uh, came in a little low for uh, came in low for FY twenty one. And uh, we're still fine. We have those reserve fund balances as well. I may as well tell you now, our reserve, our uh, cash fund balance, reserve fund balance for sewer is 524,351. 
for water reserves, uh, we have 1,272,255. And for cable enterprise fund, we have 210,072. So we've had the reserves to cover any uh, deficit that we ended the year wasn't, well, they weren't big, but we had the money to cover it. But the bigger implication of having it come in low for FY21 is uh, we were limited in the amount of, re of revenue that we could project into 22 because we couldn't just say, we think I'm gonna make a lot more money and put it in there. So there's an amount that we're limited by DOR to put in as revenues. And so we went ahead and, and kept those lower estimates and uh, we had to then change how it was funded here by showing a higher amount in uh, water reserves sewer reserves and um, Hadley Media reserves than we had shown when we balanced the budget at the annual town meeting. So this is only a change in funding to add uh, use of reserves in lieu of reduced revenue expectations. Mm -hmm. So that's all we're asking you to vote on there. You do need to vote of approval to change that. Okay, motion okay. to accept. Second. Motion by Joyce, second by Jane. Anything else on article two? Jennifer? Roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Changelo? Yes. Wiskevitz? Yes. And Parsons? Yes. Thank you. Want me to keep going, Carolyn? Sure. I mean, I mean, I can take a break, give you a break and do this little one. <laughs> article, article three, this was um, a, a, the, from, our, from a previous article for the Agricultural Commission's right to farm signs. And this was a, an, a it, it cost more than what was allocated for the articles so was an extra $375 that we need to cover that cost. Okay. So moved. Second. Motion by Joyce, second by Jane. Anything else on this one? Jennifer? Roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Chungalo? Yes. Wiskevitz? Yes. And Parsons? Yes. And then article four is cleanup articles. So these are uh, balances left over from projects and they are not needed. So we are taking those un unused balances and returning back to where they belong. So moved. Second. Okay, motion by Joyce, second by Jane. Jennifer. Hill. Yes. Nevin Smith. Yes. Changalo. Yes. Wiskevitz. Yes. Parsons. Yes. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> and what, <laughs> what's missing from here, last time we always have a, a, hold, a placeholder for paying prior year bills. There aren't any. So that's good. We miss out. Yeah. <laughs> I'll let you take it from here, Linda. Oh, the capital, capital, capital. articles. So, okay. Um, or, or David, you can, this is what we voted on last night. That's true. Yeah, sure. I'll go over it real quickly. Uh, so the capital planning committee, uh, we <clears throat> looked at the various capital requests and uh, we decided that we wanted to not go outside the levy. Uh, we did not want to have a, a, a ballot vote for uh, you know, a debt exclusion. And so what we came up with was around $350,000 was where we kind of had to be to stay within the levy. So that way we would not um, be increasing taxes due to uh, capital expenditures. Um, we did have to defer some of the requests. There was a $300,000 dump truck, $420,000 for gas pumps um, and, and some other items. But obviously we couldn't fund them all this year. Otherwise, uh, you know, just that dump truck alone DPW wouldn't have gotten anything else, um, nor would any other department. So um, in the end, this is what uh, the vote was unanimous last night um, to recommend approval of these capital items. 
And uh, so we have the DPW, um, well, you see the list right there, but basically there's five things that are within the levy. And the rest are coming for borrowing from water reserves, sewer reserves that'll be paid back from water and sewer revenues. All right, so tell me why public safety needs equipment, $199,654. Where's, where's that equipment going? Because we just replaced a lot of equipment there and we put in new equipment at the North Hadley. So where's that? So that is for main st the main station. And that is to replace the radio, the desktop radio consoles that are in dispatch. Uh, those, those were all brand new, not too long ago. What happened? Uh, from what the chief explained to us, they are not able to find parts for them anymore. And if they go down, I guess they have one loaner somewhere in the in the Northeast, but uh, we'd, we'd be out of luck and have to operate out of uh, North Station temporarily. Um, so this is to replace the radio equipment there in, in the main station. And uh, we were assured that this would set us up for quite some time to come. And what about the PC equipment? What's that about? So that is to replace uh, police department computers. I forget how old he said they were, but they were very old. Very old. Uh, but Chief Mason submitted a community IT grant today um, and the hope that grant request or grant submission incorporated not only <clears throat> the police equipment, but also some from the schools and town hall as well. So if we are successful in that grant application, this money, even if approved, will not be spent. Okay. I move, we accept. Can I, can I, um, there is a part two to this, um, which is the uh, $30,000. And, and I don't know, maybe we leave that out from the vote right now, Carolina or David, I don't know where we want to stand on this. But we had an article a few years ago, a couple years ago, 2019, to um, repair the gas pumps. And as David mentioned, there was an article for uh, one of the requests for us for over 400,000 to replace the gas pumps which is something we don't wanna do right now. Um, and maybe it's not economical to do at any point, or maybe it will be economical at such time as uh, a new DPW station goes in or you know the building. But in the meantime, we have the 30,000 approved from a couple of years ago that they were, uh, that we're wondering about, well, that we're interested in converting over and directing to decommissioning the current gas pumps. And whether this is enough money or whether it's a, we'll need more in addition, we don't exactly know right now. So it is, um, I think it, we think it's a good, a good use of those funds. I don't know, David, whether you want to proceed with that at this time. I think we wanted to yeah. make sure in case something happened over the winter that we had some yeah. money towards it. Yeah, no, I think it's a good idea to repurpose it. It was approved uh, two years ago, but you know, if we happen to need it this winter, it would be good to have it and not have to wait till springtime meeting to right. repurpose it. So I, I do also have a, a an inquiry into the um, the attorney as because the article before was for repairs. Does repairs maybe include the commissioning? In which case, we could pull this part out completely. But I think to keep us covered, it would be nice to have that this part of your vote tonight. If you're uh, if you, if you approve. Are, are we going to put on the uh, ARPA request on here too that we talked about last night for the trailers? Oh, you know what? Um, maybe. So, so I can talk about that. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. We. It really was a crazy day working on this warrant. It was. That's a good point. <laughs> so, if you if you remember uh, the last couple of meetings and you voted on per, uh, pursuing replacing the trailers for DPW. Uh, we were we we're still learning a lot about ARPA and how we, what's the how to spend it is one of the, the directions that we're seeking um, and we do uh, we would like to use the ARPA funds but we don't know yet whether ARPA funds need to be appropriated at town meeting so we are not the only municipality who is unclear with a lot of the directions yet from the state so. That is one of the things that we are putting out to uh, town council to see if, in fact, we need to appropriate that money from ARPA to cover the cost of the trailers. 
So I guess I would like to, um, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up, Linda. Me too. Actually, we got so caught up today. Um, so I, I, we could be adding that. Um, yeah, I. We could we could just we do could. a five five point three right now. Yeah. Right while we're here, yeah. I almost would feel more comfortable even if they say no, it doesn't have to be. Then we can take it out. But I would feel more comfortable if we had that vote in there for town meeting. Because the goal is to do this this winter or this, this fall. And uh, if we miss this opportunity and we find out that we have to vote on it by town meeting uh, or town meeting vote, then uh, we're going to be stuck until the spring and have to deal with the same falling apart trailers. Let's do it now. I include that in my original motion, two and three also. Thank right. you. And just so everyone's clear, that's completely out of ARPA, which you know, I guess you can consider that free money, quote unquote, even though it's not, but it's, uh, you know, it's not going to come off the tax rate or affects the, affect the tax rate at all. So. Okay, let's do it. All right. So motion by Jane, who seconded? Was that Joyce? Yes. Okay. Jennifer? Roll call vote. Phil? Yes. Devin Smith? Yes. Chungalo? Yes. Wiskevitz? Yes. And Parsons? Yes. Thank you. David, if, if I can just um, remind everyone the reasons why we're looking at use, uh, replacing those DPW trailers, just I, I just want people to know that it's not something just because we have extra money we're going to do it. There is definitely a concern in the conditions and the environment for the employees based on the, the age of the trailers as well as the very, very, very wet uh, summer that we had and the damage, the additional damage that occurred to the trailers from, the, from naturally, just from all of the moisture. And the massive family of mice that live in there. Yeah, I didn't want, didn't want to go there. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get a cat. <laughs> okay, that's cheaper. <laughs> we, we when it town hall. <laughs> Get a cat and new trailers. There we go. <laughs> I hate to tell you that that was a solution that was offered to a Golden Court tenant when she reported mice. Oh, you're Why don't kidding. you get a cat? Oh, brother. I am finding interesting things happening over there, which I will report on later. <laughs> My goodness. We need to open and close a warrant for 5.3 or not. What's 5.3? So, uh, John, I think John's right. We, you need to vote to open up the warrant, vote again on the uh, ARPA funding for the trailer, and then, and then vote to close it. Thank you, John. Um, I didn't do it as 5.3. I think it can just go in the capital list. Is that okay. In which case, it's it certainly, I'll, I'll leave, I'll leave that to you to decide whether you I don't think it. it. I don't think that it's because it's a new warrant. It, we're just adding to the capital things that we needed to open and close it. They're just things that they decided at capital meeting to put into this. Yeah, all right. Well, first you said 5.3, and I think you need to open and close it for that. But if you're just going to add it to the list as you did, Linda, then maybe we don't. Okay. It's on the list now, so I think we don't have to yeah. open open it. It's just part yeah, of the we, we have had other things come and go on the list in the last few weeks. Um, so if it was for that, it might have pertained to a few others. So yeah. I, you know, I I'll leave that that's to That's true. Yeah, I think that's fine with that. Okay. You want to yeah. leave it? We okay? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oops. Stabilization. Uh, this is the transfer to we stabilization. Didn't, we didn't vote on that. We only talked about it. Oh, we I thought it. part no, of the side has been voted on with roll call. It was. Yes. Yeah, so, yep, we voted. Yeah. So this is what we were talking about earlier on the stabilization fund. Uh, this 375000 was left over from an earlier draft. I was trying to reach Amy to verify that uh, that there, what they voted for on finance committee, and they'll, they'll revisit this because it's such a change. Uh, we're pretty much doubling that money. 
Um, they did vote that everything, <laughs> every all the rest of the finance, uh, all, all the rest of the uh, free cash um, after funding this, uh, they wanted to go to stabilization. And I said, I think we needed to keep some kind of a balance. So I'm suggesting at this point, 750,000. And, or up, maybe we should say up to 750,000 or you can vote what you want, but this has to be brought back to finance committee. So not quite sure where we leave this. Oops, I don't need capital planning here. Why don't we, I'll make a motion to uh, put back into stabilization up to $750,000 from free cash. Because at some earlier time, and I do specifically remember, it goes back to uh, Guilford being on the board and talking about stabilization um, policy that you wanted to keep a balance, some kind of a, a, a balance. I think it started at 750 that was supposed to increase. So I think what this is going to leave us. We're at one point. This will leave us, yeah. This will leave us between um, 150 and 200,000, and that sounds reasonable to keep in free yeah. cash. Okay. Yeah. Plus, we, plus the 750 will bring us over two million. Mm -hmm. Do we want to just to cover questions we may get from the residents to have a minimum amount, not less than, but up to? I said up to 750 until we hear from finance, we can always change that number. No, it's, so, not, it's not that, it's that we will, we are going to do something because it could be up to 750 means we could say nothing. We're gonna give them $1. We should have a minimum amount we're going to apply to this regardless. Well, the minimum amount they had there was $375,000 um, originally. And then it changed up to Seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars from free cash. So the original was was three seventy five. So if you want to do a minimum of three seventy five up to seven fifty, that's perfectly fine. I think that is cleaner. The, the other thing you can do because this is the published warrant, not just your vote tonight. Yeah, is to yeah. go ahead and say seven hundred fifty, and that puts public on notice that that's amount to be spent there. And then it's they can always it can always be amended down. At town mm -hmm. meeting or through the motions. Okay. Mm -hmm. But if, if you're comfortable approving 750, then let's just say 750. Mm -hmm. That's what I say. If we have it, let's just put it back and do that minimum because I can go back now. Okay, I'm old again, but we can go back to when I was on school committee and we always said that two million was our what we wanted in stabilization just to have as a bank account savings. So I'm 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 I'll stay with my motion, up to seven hundred fifty thousand dollars if the finance committee agrees with that tonight. Second. Motion by Joyce, second by Jane. Jennifer. Roll call vote. Phil. Yes. Nevin Smith. Yes. Changalo. Yes. Muscovitz. Yes. Parsons. Yes. All right, and then articles, did I get myself Article seven is, again, I've uh, explained this in the past, but it is the transfer of the ownership of the Goodwin Memorial to the, back to the town. I move. Can we get a second? Were you, were you moving to, Jane? I didn't hear the <laughs> motion. <laughs> I move this motion. I'll, I'll second that motion because we certainly want another building to take care of. I'm all in favor of that. No, we want to be able to start work on it so we can use it. Well, I, this is true. Yes. I've said I'm all in favor of another building for us to take care of, Jane. No problem. All right, so motion by Jane, second by Joyce. Uh, Jennifer? Roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Chunga Ho? Oh, yes. Wiskevitz? Yes. Parsons? Yes. Thank you. Keep going. 
Well, well, we already voted on the mural. We did that at CPA already. What's the other one here? Whoops. I uh, put that in the wrong place. We didn't pending. actually vote on it. I meant it up here. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. We didn't vote on no, it. No, no, okay. no. I, I just did my numbers in the wrong place. No, we do have you, the next. You've got five CPA articles here. And I okay. think it's your tradition to vote support and, and um, if, if you're inclined. Yep. Okay. Can we do them all as a, can we read through them and do them all as one vote or? Linda, Linda, can you tell us what is in the CPA account right now? I can. Um, well, the cash balance. Um, it's very close to what the, uh, very close to what the, Stabilization is that's two point three million less less some prior obligations. So I I'm not sure if everything that has already been voted has been deducted out of that. But but even if not, we're getting money in constantly too. So it might be down a few hundred thousand, but it also doesn't allow for income that's coming in during this fiscal year. So it's going to end up in that general vicinity of um, two point two. Yeah, two point two. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It, right. it, we're not at we're not at stabilization yet unless that passes. But the CPA does right it now at this point have two point three somewhere in that area. Correct. Stabiliz stabilization. Stabilization. Preservation. Stabilization has one point three, but CPA has oh. roughly about two point three. Right. And now yep. we did vote. Um, I'm thinking well, there was one, the big one, the, the library one for 250 out. So they might be hovering down to 200. But again, it's going to pop up by two to 300,000 this year. It'll come back. Okay. Because I don't okay. think there's any huge ones here. No. Not, yeah. So there, yeah, there's five, five, in a, five in a row. We're still working with the attorneys, making sure our, um, the wording is correct. Mm hmm. Um, you want to go, Carolyn? I know so what we, you want. Yeah, how would you like to go through it? Yeah. Let's just vote on them. I'll make a motion to accept the uh, library Gnatic mural restoration. Second. Okay, motion by Joyce, second by Jane. Jennifer. Roll call Phil? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Chungaloo? Yes. Wickhamitz? <laughs> yes. Parsons? Yes. Thank you. CPA approved all of these already? They did. Okay. And they're, yeah, they're all close to an, uh, anonymous. Uh, anonymous. Uh, there was one against on one of them and for, a, for a different kind of a reason, but. Um, just, just curious on uh, what type of picnic tables and how many for $6,400? Woo! How many picnic tables? Can answer that there's there's i think uh they want four of each four eight foot with the built-in uh benches they're steel with the resin coating and they okay. want the they want four of the round ones as well seats attached steel with the resin coating they want them to last okay so only eight right yes but they're running about eighteen hundred dollars a piece right now okay so and I found them a discount, so hopefully they'll be able to get them in. Okay, I just just curious because you know people are going to ask that question. Thank you. I move we accept Article Nine. Second. Okay, motion by Jane, second by Joyce. Jennifer. Roll call vote. Phil. Yes. Nevin Smith. Yes. Chungalu. Yes. Miskevitz? Yes. Parsons? Yes. This is at, adding to a previous article uh, for the uh, restoration of the town hall columns estimates for the complete project of restoration, uh, repairing them and adding paint. Um, it's another 35,000, which the CPA has approved for a total of the 66,000. And they will not have to replace them if they can get in and restore them. These are the four columns in front of 
town hall are, are, are faced are faced to our visitors. Do we need to worry about the fact that they were approved in 2018 and we haven't used the money yet? It's going to assess, uh, specifically be at, in addition to the 35,000. Uh, oh, you mean timing wise? Is it going to last? Yes. Uh, yes. Well, seeing as CPA has approved it and I believe, uh, I don't know whether they needed to do a second vote or did they already do an extension on that one, Carolyn? I don't, I don't know, but we can get that. That's a good question to get back to them and make, make sure so, that that's a part of it. What's your question? <laughs> CPA money, if it's not used within a certain time limit. Yes, they have. Return? That's it. Yeah, it wouldn't be on here unless CPA had approved that extension. Okay. So, and I don't think it's hit the two, it might just be hitting it now. And I can explain that a little bit better. So uh, it was allocated originally for painting and it went out to bid as a painting, um, but it is really a preservation in that it, it's, it's actual construction. They have to replace parts of the, of the column. So it's much more expensive than just painting. I move we accept article 10. So moved. Okay, motion by that. Jane, second by Joyce. Oh. Amy, you're still too slow. <laughs> I'm sorry. I got here early and I'm still too slow and I changed it <laughs> to Wi Fi. Jennifer. Out in the boonies here. Roll call. Roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Chungaloo? Yes. Muscavitz? Yes. And Parsons. <clears throat> yes. Golden Court windows. Uh, project. Very necessary. Very necessary. Go ahead. Check it away. <laughs> um, Golden Court was built in 1950 something. And these are the original windows. Do I need to say more? No, the only thing that I question, and I think that we have questioned in the past, and I don't want to negate the necessity for them, um, but this is a state-owned, operated um, facility. And we keep having to put town money into Golden Court, even though not every resident in there is a Hadley original resident. They are now because they live there. But what I'm saying is, is that this isn't really, we say Hadley Housing Authority, but actually it's supplied by, it's a state mandate or state run or state whatever we have. Amherst overseeing it. I mean, we have so many different um, things. You know, I think I'm almost wanting to think that we need to take back if we're going to be doing this and in, in, in the ownership of, of taking care of this facility over there, um, you know, and making it what it should be. Um, I'm not against spending the $75,000, but I would like to do future investigation of why. Amherst is in charge of this and not us in charge of this, um, of the area. That's a question for a different day, but in terms of the windows, and it's right. a good question for a different day, this yep. is not the total amount of the windows. Amherst Housing has money from the state, but not sufficient. So okay. we are supplementing. Okay. I'm all in favor. I'll make a motion to accept the $75,000. Second. Motion by Joyce, second by Jane. Jennifer. Roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Hang on Nevin a minute. Uh, uh. Hang on a minute. All right, go ahead, John. They've got water lines that need major repairs. They haven't done anything with their sewer lines. They, I don't know what the situation with, is with the boilers. I know they had broken pipes before. We really need to address this with the state. Yep, that's what I was saying, John. If they're gonna if they're gonna give this to somebody to maintain, we don't really have a housing authority. I understand why Amherst is in there right now, but we shouldn't supplement the state right now on their property. Uh, 
Well, I'm going to supplement the windows to see if we can get it done for the winter. They don't need to be in cold, drafty areas, our elders. Or... They, they did do the boilers, John, last year to answer your question. But I agree, there's a lot of stuff over there that needs help. So we need to bring this up at another meeting where we can have more discussion on what we should do. I absolutely agree with that statement. Um, well, we but need I'm to not gonna... find, find out who's in charge of it from the state and bring them into our meeting here and see yep. what, what the hell is going on with that place. It used to be Mr. Paulson years yeah. ago, and then Connie was a rep. Um, and then, then all of a sudden they disbanded. So we, we do need to bring this up at another meeting and have a good discussion on it. I think Amy was saying something. I think she got uh, cut off there. Sorry. That's okay. Not your fault. It's just. Okay. I know. I, I went. No, sorry. I'm, I guess I might still be slow. I like went off my Wi-Fi and now I'm back on the iPad. Um, but what I was really shouldn't also not going to have the people that live there be the ones that have to suffer because of something that's, you know, mm -hmm. a state issue. Correct. <clears throat> Exactly. I didn't mean it like that. I, we're, we're not punishing the, the citizens of Hadley and the citizens of Golden Court. But we do need to address this with the state, whoever's in charge of it. I totally agree. Right. What, what six weeks of experience over there has shown me, we have a lot of things to talk about. <clears throat> All right, Jennifer, okay. Well, right. Motion, is, motion is on the table. Roll we'll call vote. Phil? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Chungalo? Yes. Wiskevitz? Yes. Parsons? Yes. Thank you. And the last one is the housing, uh, housing fund transfer, the transfer to the Hadley, Hadley, Hadley Affordable Housing Trust. Uh, the reason there is uh, there was six four one against uh, no abstentions and the one opposition was because the request for us for two hundred twenty thousand the amount the full amount of the housing allocation in CPA the amounts you know how we vote the set asides each year and yeah. uh, they reduced it to a hundred thousand so the opposition was wanting it to be the full amount that went in so there's no opposition to moving money into the trust. So is it actually necessary to do this at this point where now people can return to work and actually make some money to pay their rent? This isn't the um, rent. This, this isn't this, the rent. No, it's, it, it is confusing. People do think it's nothing to do with the amount that we voted last year out of CPA for the rental uh, uh, amount. This is this is for that uh, the housing affordable. How do they file Oh boy, I wish, is there someone else on? Bill, are you on? Yeah, it's, it's, it's it's Bill and Molly were talking about <laughs> one of our meetings, right? I can tell them to get Yes. Them. Yes. Uh, okay. <laughs> I, I am here if you'd like some background. Go ahead, Bill. Go. Oh. Um, so now that we have an affordable housing trust fund, there is mm -hmm. statutory authority for the affordable housing trust fund to take over the management of the affordable housing bucket of CPA. And the rationale for doing that is that the Affordable Housing Trust Fund has uh, more expertise, more experience with the constraints of the affordable housing structure in Massachusetts. <clears throat> there is no pending uh, project that is being uh, discussed. It's just a matter of uh, administrative efficiency. The Affordable Housing Trust Fund would be able to act more quickly uh, because its expenditures can be approved by a vote of the select board versus getting money out of CPA for affordable housing purposes, uh, which can only happen twice a year in conjunction with the town meeting. Um, so it's, um, 
It's what um, Molly Keegan, who is the chair of the uh, economic housing and economic development committee has uh, said it's being considered a best practice across the state that apart from the grant that the um, CPA committee made to Golden Court for the window usage uh, out of the affordable housing to this now the CPA has never dipped into the affordable housing set aside nor has it ever been asked for a contribution from the affordable housing set aside and uh, the mastering the CPA rules is confusing enough mastering the affordable housing rules beyond that it just seemed to be easier to centralize that aspect and not put too much more work on CPA committee so, um, does that answer all the questions about this? Could I get a motion, please? I move we accept Article uh -huh. 12. Oh, no, Amy's doing it. <laughs> yes. All right. <laughs> I'm in. I'll second it. All right, so motion by Amy, second by Jane. And I, I do just want to comment that I'm a little disappointed in, uh, I know the one person that was an, a, against this uh, or, or voted against this on CPA, uh, the goal was to move all of the money over to the, the trust fund, which would have streamlined things greatly. And uh, I've noticed we have a, a tendency in town to wanna hang on for dear life to control over, over things like this. Um, I think we missed an opportunity to actually put these funds to good use. Like Bill said, they've never been used before. Um, and so now we have finally have a, a, a trust fund that's uh, a trust, I should say, that is able to use these for their intended purposes, which is helping affordable houses. But now we're, our hands are tied to a great degree because we don't have those full funds available to us. So I, I think that's a mistake, but at least it's somewhat of a move in the right direction. But, and we can't amend it, right? Like that's a line item from a different committee. Yeah, I think CPA has to do it on town meeting floor, right? But it could happen on the fall town meeting that someone will put it back to the total amount. Right. So if we all voted to not agree with it, and then it would be explained why during the meeting, and we could have it amended on the floor. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Is that a thing? Uh, it, it could be done, but we have learned when it comes to zoning issues that trying to amend things on town meeting floor is often a recipe for failure. And is that because we don't necessarily, we have to have like a quorum, right? Well, you have to have a quorum. You also have to uh, be sure that uh, in zoning particularly, more so than some other areas, you want to be sure that a change you make in one paragraph won't have a ripple effect through three other paragraphs. Um, in this case, the um, as I said, there is no specific project that we're looking at. So maybe it, it, from my perspective, I think it's better to uh, maybe get into the habit of doing this and maybe uh, maybe in a few years we can get this transfer on the consent agenda. Um, we're really just moving money. The money's not leaving town. It's just going into a different account number at this point. And um, yeah, personally, I, I'm not prepared to push it. I, I, I don't think there's any gain to pushing it. And um, uh, it does only need a simple majority. Uh, we can come back again, uh, but uh, yeah, I, I, I don't think it requires, this isn't the, the hill to fight on. Okay, a no, question have... for you, Bill. If the, um, commun if the housing, affordable housing trust chooses to do, use this money, does the town or the select board or anyone else have a say about that happening or do they now have the power over the money? Uh, no, the, um, the spending authority 
the discretionary spending authority of the Affordable Housing Trust Fund, which does have at least one select board member on it, uh, is nominal. It's something like $7,500. Um, spending a larger amount requires either a town meeting vote or a select board vote to ratify <laughs> the trust funds vote. Okay. So um, it, in all likelihood, it, it, once, once it gets into the trust fund, it is still subject to the CPA rules for how that bucket can be spent. And we report back to the CPA on what we have done with it in every year. But um, it, it no longer requires a CPA vote or a town meeting vote. That's what I was looking for. Thank you. All right, but that just means that you dip into it 13 times for the nominal amount and then it's gone. So you think that it, depending on the nature of a project that may come before the Affordable Housing Trust Fund, um, I could almost not imagine, we'll maybe have four, we'll probably have somewhere around $400,000 in the trust fund if this transfer is approved. And uh, that seems like a nice piece of money, but it's not actually enough to do much with by itself. Uh, so in all likelihood, any projects that come out of the Affordable Housing Trust Fund might, uh, we can do something like put down a deposit on a piece of property that the town thinks would be good to acquire, but we can't vote to acquire it quite yet. Um, but uh, we can't actually make things happen with that amount of money. So we would probably be coming to the select board to ask for permission to distribute uh, seed money. And then we'd probably have to be going to town meeting for a bigger project of whatever sort might come before us. So uh, uh, yeah, we're not, it's not enough money to get in too much trouble with. So curiosity, All right. is the affordable housing trust able to negotiate, for instance, a loan <clears throat> with a bank and use this as a down payment? On something, it does have authority. It, it does have authority to enter into uh, transactions of that type. Yes. Okay. It does have authority to borrow money, um, but it would, uh, you know, exercise it again. If it does have it by statute. It has a select board member on it, so you're always in the loop. Yeah, I just somebody was going to ask, I'm sure, so I needed to have information. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you that the committee makeup, at least as it was at our initial couple meetings, um, things like that, I'm sure would the committee would want to bring to town meeting, especially for big, you know bigger projects, even if it's something that could be done by just the select board. There seems to be a you know let the people decide uh, mentality, which is good. So. Okay. Anything else on this? Mm -mm. All right, uh, Jennifer. We'll call vote. Phil? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Chungalu? Yes. Skevitz? Yes. And Parsons? Yes. Thank you. We don't vote on the uh, planning board typically, right? Correct. Okay, <laughs> I'll take that off then. <laughs> There's your, this is the, the last one. Mm -hmm. So this is really a decision. Do you still want it on based on the information I shared with you or um, leave it on? If you remember the information. I'm sorry. During the hearings, we said that we would bring it to fall town meeting. Yeah, uh, leave it on. It isn't really going to matter either way with all the information that we have right now. The, the state is going to do what they want to do depending on the uh, threat we have with the mosquitoes. Okay. I mean, yeah, I mean, I leave it on. Again, it's really what people want to do. I mean, I personally have a lot to say about it. Um, 
you know, with doing it or without doing it. I mean, you're what's happening is well, obviously on the Cape, they're spraying every year for, um, you know, tourists. But when you kind of get out to the western, more wooded part of the state, I mean, towns opting out is just literally creating a really, really messy patchwork. And I'm pretty sure that a mosquito doesn't know the, you know, the lines between towns. And, um, you know, MDAR has been monitoring and there's been no adverse effects to honeybees. Um, and, you know, there is no cure for Tripoli. I mean, the state's gonna do whatever they're gonna do anyway. Certified organic farms can opt out. Um, I personally trust the science, I'm a farmer. Um, it's mostly farm laborers that are working outside and having to deal with it. But anyway, that's just me. So you're gonna make a motion? Just make a motion to keep it on the agenda. It's for discussion. No, I asked Amy if she was going to do it. Oh, well, I'll I'll move to keep it on the agenda. Like I personally don't want to, but I already said months ago that I would. So I'm not going to rescind something that I already said because exactly. it doesn't make me very credible. But I agree with you. So I, move. I, I, Leave I it agree. On. I want to listen to all the uh, opinions at town meeting, but I am I am not for it. So, well, yeah, and that's we don't necessarily need to make the motion to keep it on because it's already on. What we need is a, a recommendation one way or another. Do we want to opt out of the state program or do we want to stay in the state program? That's that's what this this article is really asking. Oh, I'm sorry. There wasn't a line that says whatever recommends under it. So I just didn't know if it was something that we could do. Um, so because it just it the way it reads is mosquito opt out or take any action relative. So like I would, so then we would, whatever we're voting on is if we say no, that would just be the second column, right? Or the second number. The, we, would, we would do it just like we did with the other ones. We'll add that. Okay. It recommends. <laughs> yeah. And um, it's going to have a little bit more wording than that from town le from legal. So yeah, we're, whoever, we're has, whoever has that motion um, would, would, would want to explain that or I could help explain that at town meeting what what happened in the past and just give some history on that so okay so we'll I have think it's going to depend on how it's worded I mean some of us sound like we're going to say yes and some are going to say no and depending on the wording we may have said the wrong thing according to the wording oh I, it will be very clear once when legal that's why we're having it's very brief that's just a placeholder so once okay. legal, legal will put the right wording in so that it's clear to the voter how they should vote. So this yeah. one will have to go out without recommendation, but you'll have the forum and you'll have the opportunity to say your recommendation at, at town meeting. Okay. And then you'll, by then you'll have the full wording of it because we, we didn't come up with it. Legal has it and then somehow uh, it isn't what he sent to us today, so. Is it possible for us to like add a recommendation before yeah, well, town meeting. We have I two mean, we have two weeks. We'll have another meeting okay. before this, right? And the forum is a meeting for you. Isn't that posted? Oh, because it's I mean, gonna get sorry. But this me. needs to get posted exactly how the wording is going to be. I think Linda, with everybody here right now, we can put some language in here so that the intent, the way Jane's saying that is the intent will be clear as legal reviews it to word it legally the intent of how the select board wants it written on there so that the voter knows how they're voting sure. meaning what do you want me to say well when we talked about this i guess it was earlier this summer uh the people that joined the zoom wanted us to opt out of the state spraying program for mosquitoes and at the time we voted to not do that but we said we would bring it to the voters so I guess if the town will vote to opt out of any state mosquito control or mosquito spring plan. And that's like, that's through MDAR. Right. And that, so, that oh, is, of, yeah. 
and this will get fixed, but uh, this mosquito spraying program. So the that, will be the, that, that will be the intent of it, yes. Yeah, the vote will be to opt so, out of it. There's a chapter so the section of the law that uh, Joan Comfort sent us with the opt out and the, the, the state recommending for some of the towns who opted out not to opt out. They don't have a choice. If you could get the chapter and section out of that letter, I think you'd, you ought to add that in there also. Oh, this is just for tonight. Uh, this so is that just you, a placeholder. So that you can right. make your, um, so you have, feel like you have enough information to make a recommendation, but definitely town council is going to have to work through and put those things in it. But no, I mean, you, this, this, this is all under state, really under state ordinance right now. It, we can vote however we want. And the state's going to do what they want anyway. Pretty much. Right. Been told. But I think that people just want to be able to decide whether or not the town can request to yeah. opt out. Yeah, that's yes. That's the whole issue. They want the town to, to uh, you want a decision from the residents if they want to choose to request to opt out. Despite well, then, the oh, information sorry. that we got where those towns who did request to opt out were, were denied. So, but we have to take that out of the equation. Right. I think we have to find out, we want to know, do the residents agree that they want the choice to request to opt out from the state? Do okay. you want to opt out or don't you want to opt out? Let's not get so technical here. Do you want to be in or out with a spraying? And, and, and I think that information that we got Period. absolutely going to be precedent at this meeting. So we vote and then you say does or does not recommend, right? And then put Or the we in. say recommends and you and it goes, if you're all recommending against it, it'll go zero, five, zero. Or do you want to actually do a positive recommend against? It's up to I, think, I think okay. that it should be a positive and then recommend against instead okay. of a negative statement. Okay. Like that? Yeah. So let's vote and okay. see what happens, I guess. <laughs> Take your motion, Amy. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, Actually, I, we just put zero. To, okay, so how do I word this motion? I'm so sorry. I, I'm, I'm moving to remain opted in, but I'm we're voting on this, right? So and I'm, so I'm would, not recommending. You're recommending against having the vote opt out. So it would just be a zero without the against for her vote. So I'm against it. So you would be zero. You okay. would be, you, you would be counted as zero. Right. All right. Yes. Thank you. So Who's you're opting part? out. So you're against opting out. Correct. I want to be oh, in it. No, so she's positive. There she goes. No, she's saying she wants to opt out. She wants to not. No, no she says she's against opting out. All right. I'm against, against opting out. out. All right. It's well, going to save but lives. We, we've got, we kind of got two negatives <laughs> here, or, or we're That's going right. against each other. So we have the article is saying if the town will vote to opt out of the mosquito prank, spraying program. So, so why don't we change it to say, to see if the town will stay in the mosquito spraying program. So that's- Will, will you that's, trust me to ask legal and I'll explain to them the, the, the confusion of this discussion. Yeah. I know the intent of what you want. Uh, I oh, think I see what you're clarify saying. It. Cl so legal like clarify it. Right, because it's it, right now it would be to see if the town will vote against opting out and so that again that creates a double negative right so i so, can see why that would be confusing i see what you're saying so why don't we just vote as a select board who wants to stay in who wants to stay out or or should we stay in yes or no to that question all right go I, for it amy i recommend it at all until it hits the floor so you're going to do an abstention when it's your turn yes okay so I don't we, know if that's smart, but I mean, I also rather... you also oh. have the ability to put the select board will recommend at the meeting. Uh, how do you word that? Uh, 
pending. You can make, pending. Just make the vote. It would, you don't have to do it now. Yeah, I would just no, say I think we need I think we need to have a vote now just so that it's available to be seen by the town because if you don't have something concrete before it just sounds like we don't really know what we want to do. I make a motion to not opt out on the mosquito program. Second. All right. Anybody want to second that? I'll second it. Yeah, Amy did We're it. Not opting out of the Mosquito Spring program. All right. So Joyce made the motion to not opt out of the program, seconded by Amy. So will you change that, Linda, please? I think this is correct. Yeah, you got it right, Linda. I'm voting to not opt out. So, so you're recommending against your, what? Right. So All then right. we'll be a positive number. Yep. So I'll, I'll say it that way. To, to you don't have to do that. You don't have to. Linda, it's going to be the count. It's going to be 320 or 410 or. Yeah, but which one am I going to vote? If I want to not have the state spray, vote for me. I don't care where you put it, but that's my position. Okay, so if, if you're they voting. Spray either way, if they feel that it's a uh, necessity. All right, can we vote it this way, Jennifer? Can we just go down the line and say in, uh, stay in the program or opt out one by one, and then we can figure out how we're gonna word that answer at the end there. Yes, absolutely. Roll call vote, feel in, out. Remain in the program. Nevin Smith, in, out. Out. Chungalo, in, out. In. Wiskevitz, in, out. In. Parsons, in, out. In. So okay. see how the numbers would be. Yes. Oh, it's, I got my first name. Simple. It's very simple. E104, right? Yes. Yes. It, we don't to... need to put their names down like that, but the people always do like to see Linda who says no. So it would be the one, four, zero, and right. then it would say who opted out. I'm just who going to send in. this to the attorney and he'll tell okay. me how to write it up. For our, I'm gonna tell him this is how they voted. These four yes. people wanted to stay in the spraying program. One wanted to leave, opt out of the program. And how do we write up? How do we write it up? Okay, okay. sounds good, Linda, thank you. That was the, the most difficult vote we've ever taken. <laughs> and it will be the it will be the longest part of the meeting. All <laughs> night long. All yeah. night long. That's right. Which way do we vote? What, what? No, it is. Oh my God. It is in a row. afternoon. In. We all need to go back to English class. <laughs> yep. <laughs> my mom would be disappointed. I'm sorry. <laughs> if you're watching at home, I'm sorry, mom. <laughs> So All right, I what think, else What else we got to do we, here? I think we, we took done? care of the reds. I'm going to get your votes in there. Uh, there may be some tweaking of the words by town council, but the meaning of what you voted will stay in. I also just wanted to tell you, I'm going to take out the reasons in this budget. This has been for your edification all along, but it's just going to come down to numbers. Yeah. Um, and, and so this, this, will, this, sec, this column will come out. Um, actually, good. yeah, I, I made. I yeah. think it looks okay. good with it in. It gives an explanation for it. Well, we don't generally do that in budgets, though. I mean, I don't want. <clears> I, <throat> I'm not sure we want to get into an annotated budget. Yeah, we don't want to have more it, than we need to know. It, yeah, it, it, it can. Look, yeah, I was just going to say they could explain it at the public forum. Well, and I think where those things are happening. Exactly. And it can be in the, it can be in your motion notes or whatever, which I guess we'll yep. be working on next. <laughs> yep. That's good. But so other than that. The post a warrant. Post it. Well, you need to sign. Yes, you need to sign. Yep. Oh, and look, this is great. It works by out. By Friday. By Friday. So we can do it tomorrow yeah. after all the dedications, drop into town hall and sign your name. Right. That's an excellent idea. And we'll have the, the signatures separate. 
So uh, if there's if the attorney doesn't get here in time, get get this fixed up in time. We'll fix it up after the fact, and we'll still have your signatures. How's that? Oh, sounds good. But then I can't have first day of October. Oh so. well, wait, Jennifer, can you just bring the paper, the last signing page, to the ribbon cutting? We can just stop sure. in at town hall instead of having to do that at ribbon cutting. Let's just not let's not get it muddied over there. Let's just do what we need to do. All right. Can so we you need spell a my name hall. correctly, please. Yes, I'll, I'll take care of it. Oh. oh, okay. All right. Do we need a motion to sign the warrant like usual? Motion sure. to sign the warrant. All right. Jump on. Okay. All right. Motion by Joyce, second by Jane. Jennifer. <laughs> yes. I'll vote Phil. Yes. Nevin Smith. Yes. Chungaloo? Yes. Muscadets? Yes. Parsons? Yes. Thank you. That was very painful. Yes, it was. <laughs> we, we try our best. We try. It's just practice. <laughs> no, 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 it wasn't even you. It was totally You guys us. did a great so job. It's us not getting it together here. That was what yeah. was painful, not, not Linda and Carol and no. <laughs> It was fun. Oh, uh, you're good. lying. <laughs> <laughs> Carolyn, is there anything on the administrator's report that you need to hit for tonight? Yeah, I'll breeze through it. In case you don't know, tomorrow's a ribbon cutting, and the lieutenant governor is definitely going to be there. Uh, it. I, I have to thank everybody who was involved. Uh, friends of uh, Hadley's seniors are helping out with refreshments. Um, Haley's been a big help as, long, as, as well as Jane and input from Mike and Patrick. Uh, so everything's on board. Everything looks good. So it's going to be a great morning. It's going to be really nice. Are uh, we going to be color coordinated? I want to know what everybody's wearing. I have um, no idea. <laughs> oh my you won't God. won't recognize me because I will not have on my corduroy shirt. Oh, fabulous, <laughs> Jane. Okay. I'm going to look for someone different. That's right. <laughs> Where are we meeting? At right there. the library. It's, it's, yeah. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. <laughs> and so it's not going to be on the front lawn because that did get reseated. Uh, so that is going to be right in back of the library in between the library and the, sen in the senior center. We got a great, great little spot. It'll look great. It's going to, it's looking wonderful. So, and there's coffee in advance and pastries at the senior center. So when you arrive, grab your coffee and then go sit down. I'm nice. need them way before that. <laughs> That's just your second cup or fifth cup. <laughs> so I want to let you know that Shyla Davis, who is a graduate from UMass um, in all areas of natural resources and con conservation, she is going to be starting on October 6th. Uh, she's been meeting with Gary and Deb, so we're excited for her. This is going to be a, a, a launching pad for her, I'm sure. She's young. Um, but it's a great place for her to learn and start. And um, we're excited to have her here. Uh, new Parks and Rec Director, Greg Lesage, she's starting Friday. And um, I just wanna you know, re reiterate what Joyce said about uh, the teamwork. Joyce, that was you who was talking about teamwork, right? Uh, I'm yeah. all about teamwork, yeah. Carolyn. So, so the, uh, uh, Chief Mason sat here and got all the backup information from all of the research that Jennifer had done to submit that grant today um, for the IT support. So as uh, Linda mentioned, she didn't, uh, Mike didn't just submit for the police department. We really, he did a blast to all the departments to see what their needs were going to be. And uh, they pulled it all together and got the grant in. So we're hopeful we didn't get it last year. So it's good that this is a good year to do it and that we did multiple departments. So thank you to Jennifer for uh, giving them all that information. Um, so I think that's it. Just a reminder, you don't, we, at this point, there is no meeting next Wednesday. The next, the next meeting would be the 15th for the public forum to go over the warrant. You, uh, what did you say? Wednesday or Friday? Wednesday. She's, she I'm said sorry. The 13th. I said the 13th, right? That's right, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yep. You guys were saying I wasn't. Yeah. So that's all I have. All right. That's great. Thank you so much for all your hard work that you've done the past 
week, two weeks and getting all this pulled together. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. That's good. I'm glad the Lieutenant, thank you. I'm glad the Lieutenant Governor is going to be there that you guys were willing to make that accommodation for her. We do anything for our Boston politicians. You know that. <laughs> we're so happy. Uh, all right. So I, I have an announcement that on Friday evening of this week, October 1st, between four and seven, the Senior Center is going to have an open house with a sample of the kinds of programmings that we offer. And there will be um, schedules available at the ribbon cutting or at the Senior Center or online at the Senior Center. So they know what they're talking about at the public forum? Hold on. Sounds good. Thank you, Jane. I hope you'll come. I'll One try. Stop, and always food. <laughs> and tonight you approved wine, so we're really good. There you go. Um, I get off at work at five, so we'll see how that goes. Just come right Thank on you. over. Forget the <laughs> hubby. Come on over. Thank you. Um, David, so can I David, can I just interrupt for a minute? Yeah. Um, Jennifer just reminded me about the division of motions. And we have two choices because it's going to be too late to do it at the forum. She just reminded me. Um, I could send out this, it's not a vote thing that you have to vote on what the motions are going to be. I can send out an email to all of you guys and see what motions you would like to. I'll put it in a format and you guys just check off the ones that you would like to do. And I will let you know which motions you have, if you guys trust me with that. How about, how, how about just putting us under whatever we may be responsible for? Yeah, you, I mean, I, if you trust me to do that, I can send you out. Sure, I, just do I, that. Think okay. that's, I think that's a great idea. You just pick and choose and we'll do whatever you tell us. Love it. To. Okay, and unless there's something that really stands out that you wanted, I just didn't want to go, go through it again. Nope, I'm police and fire and everybody else has theirs and we'll just go with it. Okay. Who wants mosquito? <laughs> John. <laughs> Uh, Amy I have wants, nothing. Amy That's wants the problem. mosquito. Amy oh, does oh, it, John. I'll read. I'll read that letter for the people that didn't get it from uh, Elaine uh, uh, Joanne Comfort from the state. That sounds good, John. I, I definitely want that in the in the motion uh, in case there's any questions about what the state ha had mandated with their. All right, opinion. it's John's. Yeah, let you me just, it. John. I'll talk with you about that. I want to see how it's, it's all going to be how legal wants to word it and whether they can, yeah. how they, they do that. But I'll tell them that you, that is a request of yours. Yeah. Uh, like I said, because that's right from the state. That That's that's the law right now. It's not what we have to say. So Exactly. Thank you. Wait, so you're saying I get to sneak through another town meeting without having to present anything? I'll find something. Well, actually, the mosquitoes were your idea, Amy. So maybe you want to present it? What is mosquitoes? They I think he's giving it to idea. you. I they don't think it's my idea. <laughs> now you're backing out of it, huh? I, it's my John first wants year. it. John gets it. <laughs> you wanted it. Take Let it. him have it, Amy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Take it. No, I don't really want it, but I hope they're not throwing eggs. That's all. Yeah. Oh, well, we'll, do... we'll be sitting next to each other again, I bet. So I'll help you catch them. All right, uh, two quick announcements. Uh, Community Preservation Act Committee, the at-large member, um, Edwin has resigned from that, so now there's an opening. Uh, we will put that out uh, for at least two weeks. It'll probably be longer than that just because of the way the meetings fall, and Jennifer will send out an email blast to everyone. So if you're interested, send her an email. Don't send me an email. Don't send it to the select board. Send it to Jennifer because she's going to compile them all, and then we'll make the appointment. Um, and then the cemetery committee, um, uh, Ms. Uh, Stengel resigned, I believe, from the uh, cemetery committee. So now there is an opening there. So if you would like to serve on the cemetery committee, uh, same deal. Jennifer will send out an announcement and please send your, your emails or letters of interest to her. Sounds good. Thank okay. you. Motion to adjourn. And don't forget all the other boards and committees that we do have, still have room for, for anybody interested in any particular committee. Send in your resume. Sounds good. We've already gotten one recommend, uh, one person that would like to be appointed to the CPA. So if anybody else does, just let us know. 
All right, got a motion. I need a second. Second. All right, second. Finally, from Amy. Yay! Right. Roll call vote. We're adjourning. <laughs> Roll call for Phil. Yes. Nevin Smith. Yes. Chungaloo. Yes. Muscovitz. Yes. Parsons. Yes. Thank you. All right, good night.